Right guys, another video just to quickly explain MIDI functionality. What I'm going to show you in this video is how to remotely connect and use MIDI devices such as a keyboard or percussion pad, and how to use MIDI program changes to switch between your guitar presets. Now the first thing we'll need to do is connect to our remote computer. Bring up the task manager and click file and run. And then we're going to change the shell registry key to explorer.exe. and then quickly reboot, so we're going back to the desktop now. Now we'll need to download loopb one and RTP MIDI. Install them both on your main PC and copy the downloads over and install them on your remote PC. Don't worry about the message where it says it's going to download Apple Bonjour. I managed to install it on the remote PC even though it's not connected to the internet. So now we're going to configure RTP MIDI on the remote PC to only receive and configure it on the main PC to only send signals. Also don't forget to hit connect. Change the shell registry key back on the remote PC to start up .bat again. Once that's done, restart the remote PC and then we should be ready. Now loop B1 and RTP MIDI should have already set themselves up to start with Windows. So now we're going to load Studio One and create a new project. Now let's add an instrument track. Set the input device to whatever you're using or set it to all inputs if you're using multiple MIDI input devices. Set the output device or MIDI through to loop B1. So I'm just going to create a random loop just to see if MIDI is being received on the remote PC. I'm going to play and loop this. And now you can see it working by this light indicator where it says loop B1 input. Obviously you're not hearing anything at the moment because I don't have any instruments enabled. So if I enable Superior Drummer which is connected to loop B1 MIDI input, we shall begin to hear some noise. Obviously it takes a moment for Superior to load, but you get the gist. Now I'm going to show you how to initiate a MIDI program change through Loop B1 to change presets on this Switch VST. So we just need to add the program change parameter to this instrument track, and dial in the change wherever we need. So this is useful for if you were performing live to a programmed set list. If you've got a click track set up and halfway through the song you wanted to change from, say, rhythm to lead at a specific time, you can absolutely do that. Obviously you wouldn't do program changes this quickly, but this shows that it works at least. So now I'm going to show you how the remote MIDI functionality works with this Line 6 mobile keys that I had lying around. So I'll set this as the input device, and again, I'm going to iterate that no VSTs are running on Studio One. All of the sound is coming from the remote PC through the headphone jack of the Scarlet Solo and then into the inputs of the Presonus audio box and then into my actual headphones. Whew, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Enabling this listen function allows the MIDI signal to pass from the keyboard straight through to loop B1. So we just enable listen, and then... Obviously, Superior Drummer isn't the only thing we can use this with. So let's try out this free synth, Dext. You can find the download link in the description. So I'm going to install that, and obviously because it's a VST3, I'm going to add the VST3 folder to Cantabile. So let's insert that plugin, and then we can play around with it. Don't forget to connect the output, and loop B1 should be already connected to the input.
so we can also record the MIDI notes as we're playing in real time. And uh, I have to apologise, I, I had no VSTs running on the remote machine, so unfortunately you won't be able to hear anything being played back. But if you did have a VST running on the remote machine, obviously you'd hear something. So now if we add a VST instrument on here, and change the output from loop B to Dext, and we play it back, we should be able to hear it working. Now I'm sorry for the lack of sound on this part again, for some reason my video capture software didn't capture Studio One's output. My apologies. Well that's it for this tutorial guys, thanks for watching, uh, if you have any questions leave a comment and I'll uh, get back to you as soon as I can. If you like the video give us a like, subscribe, click the bell, uh, and I'll probably see you in the next video.